Hey folks, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and I've got a scimitar from Ganzo. This is the F712. It's the uh, new iteration upgrade from the G712. A tiny bit lighter and maybe a couple little improvements. If you are interested in a knife like this, and who wouldn't be? Maybe not to carry, but at least to own, especially when it's only $19.99 US. Then I think you might want to stick around for this full review. There it is. Sort of a mid-size to full-size folder. For those of you who don't watch regularly, my hands are large, right on the borderline between large and extra large. So you might say they're extra large. I don't know. My fingers are a little shorter than my hands. So whatever. And uh, so this knife fits my hand almost perfectly. A larger hand would still fit. Yeah, not too much larger, though. So if you're definitely in that extra large size, you're going to find this knife slightly uncomfortable, I think. Smaller hands, like medium male hands, you're still going to find this knife quite comfortable, I am very sure. Except for one thing, which I'll mention a little bit later on. Benchmade fans are certainly going to recognize this. This is a copy of the Benchmade, oops, Benchmade Bedlam series, uh, 860. So what we have is basically a scimitar style blade, or uh, it's not quite upswept because this thumb riser comes up quite high. So technically, it's probably a clip point. I don't know. I'm just going to call it a scimitar Persian style blade. We've got a high saber grind. We've got a nice flat area here if you need to clamp it onto a system to sharpen it, which I did. And I want to talk about that a little bit. That's the first negative. This blade here was everywhere from 24 to 17 degrees on uh, the... Uh, this side here, the, the grind. It was just terrible. Not too hard to sharpen out. I set my uh, TS Prof K02 to 20 degrees and it took a little bit of grinding and I ground it out. So on this end here, I was grinding on the top of the blade, on the, the grind up here. And from about the middle of the belly up, I was grinding down here on the bottom on the cutting edge, you know, trying to get it to smooth out. And the other side was almost the same way except for the last inch here was just terribly steep it was almost 28 degrees <laughs> it's just a steep cut in there so i had to take off a fair bit of steel and i didn't bring it totally to the edge you can sort of see a little bit of that color right there uh, i got it a little bit sharp by just polishing it polishing the cutting edge right there a bit I don't like taking off way too much steel. As this knife needs sharpening, I'm going to make it more and more true to 20 degrees absolutely everywhere. And, uh, you know, instead of taking off way too much steel in one shot, just I make it sharp enough that it actually cuts pretty well. And I will show you that it cuts quite well right here at the end and anywhere along there that you want. I've had this Ganzo G712 for a long time. Uh, no, not this one. <laughs> this one. So you can see here three different blades. And let's, if we zoom in, this is the oldest one. And then Ganzo started going to the Firebird series name. And so they still made this the G712. But they put the Firebird logo on there. And then they finally made the F712. A few uh, weeks ago, I asked your best if they would send me the F712, and they inadvertently send me the G712. So this knife is brand new, and I'm going to try to find a way to give this knife away. And uh, it's brand spanking new, but I will put my edge on it. I'll sharpen it up really nice for you, and I'll ship it anywhere in the world as long as you pay for the shipping. Okay, so now let's get back to these two. So this is the old one that I've had for quite a while, and I like it an awful lot. And you have the same kind of knife as you have here, but there's a couple differences. 
Notice, uh, just like on the previous video that I did of the, uh, what is it, the, G the F710 that I just did, you can see right here that they made the access lock hole smaller on the new one, so it doesn't slide as far. But they also made the uh, locking point. You can see the discoloration right there where my finger is. That's how far the lock goes over the tang. You know, it's just about one and a half millimeters there. And then on the brand new one, you can see the same spot right there. Whoops, right there. It goes up at about two and a quarter millimeters. So it locks up more solid and it locks up quite well. The only other difference between the two that I could find is take a look at the inside. So yeah, that skeletonizing, that helps make it a little bit lighter. Made as well, it's a little bit different weight. All the sizes are the same. Uh, the look is the same. You know, everything's sat and you've got the same brushing on the, uh, the main saber grind here. And then you've got that same thumb riser with that little bit of jimping in there. Some really nice fine jimping that helps give you a decent amount of grip. Feels really good in the hand. You've got your thumb studs that have torque screws in them. Don't try to undo those unless you are desperate to get those thumb studs off. I tried to get them off of my brand new F712 and I couldn't get it done without beginning to start to strip out the uh, screw holes. And that's with perfect size um, drivers. So I guess the steel on these thumb studs is fairly soft. So just leave them be unless you absolutely have to take them off. So what do we got here? We got a stop pin. It's nice and big. It's screwed in on both sides. We've got three pillars from the open pillar construction. And you can see that really nice stepped hourglass shape. We've got this funny hole back here. But if anybody knows a good reason why that's there, it's not really a hole, it's a dip. Please let me know. I don't understand why that's there. One thing that I don't understand is they stamp out the liners and it's one liner and it can fit on both sides with an access lock. And so this side over here, there's holes in the liner. So I wish they would have also put holes in the G10 so that the thumb, the, sorry, I keep mixing up thumb stud and pocket clip. Yeah, that'll never end, I think. So that it would not have been hard to make it so the pocket clip would be interchangeable right and left. I, but that's not really that big of a deal when you really think about it, because let me tell you, I've taken the uh, pocket clip off. I usually use it without the pocket clip. And why is that? Well, I use it without the pocket clip because it's much more comfortable in hand. You can get your different grips very comfortable, and it feels really good in hand. I won't distract you with that. You know, you can get that back grip, a nice forward grip, pinch grip. All of these grips feel a lot better with the pocket clip off. And when the pocket clip is on there, you get a hot spot in your hand whenever you have to squeeze a little bit extra. You know, in the palm of your hand, it starts making marks and it starts to hurt. And if you do it in your left hand, it feels a little bit better. It's not quite as bad. It gets a little hot on the pinky right there, but not terrible. So what I do is I usually wear it in here if I'm going to wear it. Unfortunately, uh, the Ganzo pouches that you can get, at least the ones I have, and you can see it says Ganzo tool on there. <clears throat> These pouches are just a little bit too small. You can't fit the knife in there. Now, I don't remember where I got this pouch from, unfortunately, but if I can find a pouch that is the right size, I will uh, put a list, a list it in the description below. Tail end in last. It fits in here perfectly well and your belt goes on there, and I wear this on my belt. I wear my knife, well, different kinds of knives, 
in a pouch like this, a sheath, whatever you want to call it, quite often. I tend to carry it that way. It's kind of popular in the community where I live, so nobody takes a second look, nobody bats an eye if you're carrying a knife like that. But uh, unfortunately, it doesn't fit in the Ganzo. So there's that hot spot, but let me show you what it looks like in the pocket. So you've got that uh, bent over deep carry pocket clip, but because of where they put it, you still have not quite half an inch showing, just over a centimeter of knife sticking out of the pocket. It doesn't look that bad. The funny thing is, if you go to ganzoknife.com and you take a look at the pictures, they show this pocket clip in sort of a satin steel color and not black. And yet all three that I've ever owned, they're all black. What's up with that? I don't know. So it fits in there nicely. The pocket clip, you know, holds fairly well. I think they could have made it a little more shallow, meaning that the, this pocket clip could come a little bit closer to the knife handle. And that way it wouldn't get so hot in the hand when you're, you know, using it as well. Because this just sticks out a long ways. Like that pocket clip, it just doesn't feel right for this knife. A little bit smaller, I think would have done the trick better. But we've covered that. How well does the knife cut? Well, I've sharpened it myself, as I said, on my TS Prof. And we can cut right down at the end. Closer to the tip. Anywhere you want. Going straight down into a piece of paper is actually quite tricky. You need a very sharp knife to do that. And this knife is plenty sharp for that. And of course, push cuts, trying to stay at the same spot on the blade. It's quite sharp. This is a dangerous knife. If you wanted to use this for self-defense, it could take care of business. It's sort of the opposite kind of shape of a karambit. <laughs> My brain is just not getting the words. So you got a huge belly instead of a huge recurve. And, uh, you know, both of them have their own uses. I don't usually carry this knife an awful lot, even though when I do carry it, it's in the pouch. It's just because it's not a super practical knife. Um, it would make a pretty good skinner, except for that tip would probably catch onto the guts of an animal and you'd spilling awful all over the place, and that would be awful. It's awful to spill awful all over yourself. I know, that's lame humor. So let's talk about the specs on this knife. 440C stainless steel, Rockwell of around 58, G10 as I mentioned before, just a plain stainless steel liner, and we've got two washers in here. They are both white nylon. Uh, the funny thing is, those other two that I showed you, one of them has two white nylon washers, and the oldest one that I have has one phosphor bronze and one white nylon washer. So the one that you're going to win has got two nylon washers. And I don't mind white nylon washers at all. Some people hate them. I don't mind them at all. I was watching a video last year, and there's this custom knife maker who makes folders. His lowest price knife is $5,000. Guess what he uses for his washers on almost all of his knives? Yes, he uses white nylon washers. That's because it's a really slippery compound, uh, a plastic of sorts. Uh, well, it's nylon. And, you know, if you have your pivot set just right, white nylon washers, I guess black ones too, or Teflon washers, uh, they are good washers. There's just this popular hatred of washers that are made of anything other than bronze in the knife community. And it's not based on very much logic. It's based on old thinking of old plastic washers that didn't have a lot of um, they didn't, they weren't slippery. Um, and you know, these days there's a lot of really good products that they can make washers out of. And these white nylon washers work just fine. The access lock, Ganzo calls it a G lock. And, uh, you know, it's the exact same thing as an access lock and it's made quite well. And, uh, if you use the access lock, you can just use it to, you know, disengage the lock and you can flip the knife out sometimes if you get your action just right and you can flip the knife closed just using your wrist action and 
uh, when I'm sitting in, I can't do it horizontally, but I can do it vertically when I'm sitting. I can make the knife open and close just by actuating the access lock and flicking my wrist back and forth. Let's talk about the specs. Cutting edge, 9.22 centimeters, 3.63 inches. Blade length is a bit shorter because the handle comes out right there. Handle to the tip, 8.95 centimeters, which is 3.52 inches. The blade steel thickness is 3.6 millimeters. That's 0.1415 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, it's too thick. It's 0.76 millimeters. That's uh, 0 0.03 inches. I think that's because they're not planning on this knife being a super practical cutting knife or they just weren't thinking. And so the thickness of that edge is just, it's functional. And if you keep it really sharp, it works just fine. But I wish it was a little bit thinner just behind that final grind. The handle length is 12.9 centimeters, which is five inches. The grip area, so behind this choil and up to the end of this flat area right there, 10.3 centimeters, which is four inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is 1.71 centimeters. That's 0 0.674 inches. And the handle depth, and I'm talking about, you know, by these finger choils, it's right around two centimeters at those spots. You know, it gets thinner back here, and of course it's thicker here, so it's hard to pick one area. So where your hand is grasping is where I'm going to talk about well, 2.2 centimeters, which is 0.865 inches. Feels pretty good in most hands. The total length of the knife with the blade deployed. The total length of the knife with the blade deployed is 22.3 centimeters, which is 8.8 .8 inches. So it's a pretty good size knife. It weighs 152 grams, which is 5.35 ounces. That's about 12 grams almost half an ounce lighter than the previous version. So I think they should have made a little bit more effort with some of that skeletonizing. Maybe put a couple more holes closer to the tail end of the handle here. Um, maybe hollowed out a little bit on the inside of the G10 or something to get this thing under five ounces. That would have been a very good thing. There's a lot of people that have five ounces as their target that they want a knife that's five ounces or less. But it's still a pretty good knife. I really enjoy holding it and it feels really good in the hand. How much do you want to pay for this knife? US dollars at GearBest $19.99. Canadian dollars $25.77. Right now it is exactly 17 euros at GearBest or you're paying $15.05 pound, pounds sterling. I enjoy this knife quite a lot. They chamfered the edges here probably a little bit more than they did on the G version. Let's put that out beside it so you can see. See, there they are next to each other. That's probably the third change. See how this is shiny right here? That's because it's chamfered more than it is on the old version. You can really see it on this beat. You can really see it on this bit back here. So I forgot to mention that earlier. So a little bit better hand feel on the newer version than on the older one. If you want to win this knife, please read the instructions in the description below. Follow the steps on there, follow all the instructions exactly, and you will be entered to win, entered into the draw to win the G712. So thank you so much for watching my channel. Please like this video, even if you don't like the knife. If you're interested in buying one, please consider using the links in the description below. Uh, those are referral links and I get a little bit of cash out of that. I thank you so much for that. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for sharing this video with a friend. Thank you for subscribing. It really means a lot to me. And if you leave a comment, I will try very hard to answer it. I haven't got, been able to go back and answer all of the comments last week from when I was sick. And you know, I just probably won't be able to. Sorry about that. So if you've got a new comment for me, please leave it in the comments. If you really want to communicate with me, you want to tell me something, email me at CanadianCuttingEdge at gmail.com. And you are 100% assured that I will answer you. So remember, guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.